Hello viewers, welcome to yet another new episode of BE Roundup, ET Brand Equity show where we analyze the developments of the advertising and marketing industry. And today, to help us do that, we have Mr. Karan Kumar from uh, Fab India, uh, who has been a long hand in this uh, industry and uh, has been a very uh, well-known personality. So thank you Karan and welcome to the show. My pleasure. Football World Cup has started yesterday. India is a cricket crazy nation, but you know, football comes second to uh, cricket. And we see, and especially as I come from the Northeast part, I see how, you know, people get crazy about World yeah. Cup. And yeah. you know, the love for Me Messi and the love for, you know, Ronaldo is always there. So how do you think, you know, you as a marketer, right? Uh, how do you think a marketer can, well, you know, uh, use this as a medium for, you know, advertising and reaching the mass? It's an interesting question, right? And it's a question that's been asked uh, enough number of times, uh, not just now, but I think every time there is a World Cup in India, this question is asked. See, the way, the way we need to look at this is purely from a brand and a brand's reach point of view into audience sets. Now, outside of all the revenue mm -hmm. and all the, all the show that cricket brings to the table, it also delivers that much higher and better into uh, maximum audiences. I think football still needs to reach deeper into audiences across, across cities and across geographies of India, across mm -hmm. market classes for India, uh, for brand marketers to invest monies which are comparable to, let's say, the kind of monies that are invested in, in cricket. Uh, investments in football have increased over the years, over the past decade or so. Uh, but the reality is that a large part of India, um, there are parts of India where football is a much stronger craze. Mm. Uh, the Northeast, some parts of Northeast, um, for example, as you mentioned, right. uh, parts of Bengal, parts of uh, Kerala, yeah, South, Goa, Goa yeah. um, parts of West. Uh, but there are other very large parts of the main Hindi speaking belt mm. where football is still a craze which is awaiting takeoff. Mm -hmm. So the Hindi heartland, the north, the, the center uh, part of India is still some, some place where football is going to have to work harder as a sport uh, to build that kind of following and, and, and viewership. I think there is also some part of marketing, mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. football, which needs to pull up mm -hmm. its, its socks and, and play the game more aggressively. Right. The way cricket is marketed in India, the way channels market cricket in India, the right. way channels sell cricket in India. And if you were to look at that from a football point of view, uh, from either the, the governing body's point of view or the channels mm -hmm. which further sell the sport in India. I think there is a difference. Interestingly, you mentioned about, you know, marketing this game of football, right? Uh, we have seen, you know, uh, a franchisee kind of a league uh, like ISL come up. So yeah. we, we, we have seen how IPL has benefited cricket at large. Right. Right. And making cricket a commercially uh, viable sport. Do you think ISL can do, you know, uh, the same magic for football in India? Cricket, let's not forget, as I mentioned earlier, already had or has a much larger base. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that base, which already has a much larger pan-India appeal, it's easier to create franchises based out of states and cities and to build a certain mm -hmm. followership and a certain loyalty, um, you know, around those, those franchises. Right. Uh, for football, since the... The overall appeal um, is is not as widespread mm -hmm. geographically as it is for cricket. Mm -hmm. I think that is a tougher battle. Right. So while I think ISL is a good start, mm -hmm. because what ISL does do is that it infuses a certain sense of marketing right. in the way the sport is being um, uh, uh, taken forward to audiences across um, communication channels and otherwise. Um, but it's strictly not comparable mm -hmm. uh, with with how IPL uh, works for cricket. We saw how you know uh, Star marketed the IPL, right? Or you know uh, uh, whatever cricket series Star uh, hosts, we see how uh, how aggressively they go into the market and you know promote the product. Do you really think you know uh, Sony, which has the rights of you know uh, the football World Cup in India, they have really kind of missed the bus uh, in marketing it, marketing the World Cup? The short answer is yes. Right. The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, there could be various reasons. Right. Um, and one would not want to go into them because right. those reasons could be internal to both those organizations and, 
and how they um, um, take this charter forward. Mm -hmm. But the short answer is yes. Right. I think there is a lot that can be um, that can be picked up from mm -hmm. how cricket and IPL is marketed in India mm -hmm. versus how the FIFA World Cup has been marketed so far mm -hmm. uh, and, and the build up of uh, the World Cup. So moving on from you know uh, sports uh, to the real uh, game of advertising right and you know Kant's lines the Oscars of advertising is coming up right. Uh, so India obviously has several entries this, this year and you know there are chances that you know, India might uh, couple up a couple of more, you know, medals this year. But any particular entry or any particular film that you think would will will cut across and you know uh, get more numbers. I've seen quite a few films actually, mm -hmm. which which have kind of piqued my interest. One of the films mm -hmm. that I personally like very much, right. not just from an idea point of view, but also from the way it's kind of dovetailed with the core brand mm -hmm. promise itself, mm -hmm. is the film that's been put out by uh, Stay Free. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's this film which talks about celebrating periods. Mm -hmm. I think that film talks about a very powerful story mm -hmm. of, how, um, of how for some segments of the society uh, for who, who are involved with the sex trade, it's that mm -hmm. period which they have to their own selves mm -hmm. to almost kind of take a break from work as work is defined for them right. and to spend time with, with near and dear ones and also critically to spend time in picking up some skills, mm -hmm. some added knowledge, right. some, some new things to learn and craft, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps things that could make them earn money in an alternative manner. Right. And I think that uh, as a thought is, mm -hmm. is a very uplifting thought. Mm -hmm. uh, the film's been made very beautifully and it very beautifully dovetails with the core product mm -hmm. uh, which Stay Free is. Speaking about campaigns and staying on to campaigns, uh, last week you saw a, a, a kind of a controversy come up. Amitabh Bachchan and Horlicks controversy and you know, uh, Amitabh Bachchan was asked not to, uh, you know, endorse Horlicks because it's a sugar kind of thing. So this this trend especially came up after, you know, Virat Kohli uh, took himself out of the uh, Pepsi, uh, you know, uh, this one endorsement because it's a sugar related uh, drink and you know, it it is not good for your health. Sure. My question is a larger one. As a, as a marketer, do you really think that, you know, uh, if your brand goes for a endorser and, you know, the product is not as good as it, you know, is supposed to be, is the endorser here, uh, you know, I mean, should he be pinpointed out? This is a question which has many nuances to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And before I specifically answer, should the endorser be um, pointed out or, or picked on? Mm -hmm. Uh, for the claim he or she is making. Let, let me just try and speak a couple of words around the various nuances that I think right, right. Uh, this question begs the answer to. Uh, quite clearly, mm -hmm. there are some products which are clearly in common knowledge, in common understanding, right. seen as products mm -hmm. which are not necessarily complementing your health. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. So there are some products, uh, the consumption of which mm -hmm. is very clearly uh, understood right. by society at large, by opin opinion makers at mm -hmm. large, mm -hmm. are, we, their consumption is not good for you, mm -hmm. right? And those kind of products are easier products to kind of associate with or disassociate with right, right. Uh, insofar as any celebrity endorser is concerned. In the specific case of Holics, mm -hmm. now it's a very interesting case that one has here right. and I am neither a spokesperson for Holics. Uh, nor am I a spokesperson for the ministry right. um, through which this director went out. But the, but the fact is this, that Horlicks in India has for the longest time been one of the most trusted brands. Yeah. And it's been a brand which, uh, which represented a category mm. which was traditionally of great use right. in those parts of the country which were traditionally milk deficient. Mm -hmm. right. And therefore right. it, was, it was a product mm -hmm. uh, representing the milk food uh, category which was supposed to supplement uh, a certain lack of nutrition right. uh, which was intrinsically there as part of some geographies of mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Now the question that really comes around now is that the rules that govern what is a good product and what is not a good product mm -hmm. and how much of consumption of a product is to be considered good or bad right. is different from how those rules work for international markets mm -hmm and how those rules have been enacted or enforced in Indian markets. All right. Right? Okay. Okay. 
So while there is a broad understanding mm -hmm. that too much of salt and too much of sugar mm -hmm. is actually bad for health and it would lead to a whole lot of um, cases of illness, especially amongst children in their early years of growing. Do we in India subscribe to all those rules as an official code? Or do we in India have a different set of rules, mm -hmm. spoken or unspoken, written or unwritten, right. which is at variance to what is internationally accepted norms? Because mm -hmm. a lot of brands in India are voluntarily mm -hmm. following codes that they internationally have. Right. right. Uh, I'm not sure the codes have been more specifically specified in India by the Indian law enforcement uh, and, and government mm -hmm. agencies uh, to to uh, as as a direct reference point to how they have been um, framed in international markets. So yes, for every hundred grams of Horlicks, there is a certain amount of carbohydrate content which is exceedingly high, mm -hmm. and out of that carbohydrate content, there is a certain part of sucrose right. uh, sugar content which is also exceedingly high. That information uh, has stirred up debate mm -hmm. whether that that amount of high amount of, of carbohydrate and sugars is actually to be considered good from an Indian point of view or not or as not. well. Right. You know, through Mission Portion, mm -hmm. is is GSK only trying to um, drive a marketing campaign or is it something which it genuinely tries to um, to believe in and, and and strike a change around? So those are some very difficult questions to answer because. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the rules are not very clearly framed in India in terms of do you follow the US FDA standards, right. do you not follow the US FDA standards, right. do Indian standards are, have to be different from the mm -hmm. US FDA ones or not. That said, mm -hmm. I think when an endorser uh, chooses to endorse any product, I think that endorser must be made fully aware of of what the product stands for right, right, right. and how it measures across various rules and standards set internationally and applicable in India. Mm -hmm. To that extent, I think it is uh, GSK's responsibility mm -hmm. to, to ensure that Mr. Bachchan uh, is made fully aware of what this product stands for. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the Indian context, uh, what does its formulation stand for? Mm -hmm. Is, is its formulation something which would be welcomed in mm. the Indian context of nutrition, malnutrition, or even in the Indian context, that formulation would be considered too excessive? You're right. Uh, I think once that information is made fully aware mm -hmm. um, through tests, protocols, declarations, it is a choice that Mr. Bachchan uh, has to exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, I would go on to say, uh, to answer the question that you initially began with, right. I think. As much as it is the responsibility of the endorser uh, to be conscious about the brands that he or she is choosing, mm -hmm. um, it has to be the brand's responsibility or the brand's marketer's responsibility right. uh, to make sure that enough and adequate information, true information is made available right. for the endorser to actually make that choice. We saw our uh, sports minister Rajavardhan Rathor, you know, throw up a challenge, the fitness challenge. And uh, until recently, you know, it went on to Virat Kohli and Virat then, you know, uh, invited Prime Minister. So, this is a trend that we are seeing. So, so uh, my question is something around uh, the trend of uh, challenges, right? Uh, we saw that start from the ice bucket challenge a couple of, you know, uh, I mean, so, some time back. So, as a marketer, right, as a product marketer, do you think challenges is a uh, good I mean, is, a, is a good kind of you know uh, marketing vehicle, depending on what your product is, obviously. But yeah, I'm saying you need to be responsible in framing your challenges. Mm -hmm. There have been examples of challenges which have taken people's lives. Right. 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 There have been challenges where youngsters, mm -hmm. teenagers have challenged um, you know their peers, mm -hmm. their friends to do something, and it's actually ended up taking their lives. Right. Um, but if you look at challenges being used as a marketing tool mm -hmm. and not something which is organically driven by a certain user group right. um, un, un, unnudged. Mm -hmm. But if you, were to, if you were to actually look at challenges as a marketing tool, uh, I think if the challenge spreads mm -hmm. uh, the core purpose of the brand uh, and, and makes that something which becomes a part of more contemporary conversations makes it something which becomes uh, more participative for people and audience groups to, to, to be a part of, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but each challenge needs to serve a cause right and that cause needs to be very clearly anchored within the brand's core purpose mm -hmm. uh, so moving on you know uh, uh, so nowadays we have seen you know how smart tvs right uh, re have really gained the traction uh, in india and you know connected tvs otts you know over the top devices uh, as well as you know uh, video video apps right so pwc had just come out with the you know uh, with the research which uh, says that you know by 2022 india will enter the top 10 ott markets in the world right do you see this as a uh, great market opportunity most definitely uh, because i think if you look at the current uh, cagr right. of 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 how people are consuming this platform. I think India probably is already in the top three, top right, four, right. you know, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see this phenomenon to, to stay, to grow, to thrive, and mm -hmm. to become much bigger than it is right now for, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that is clearly standing out is that in, in a market like India, where outside of cricket, mm -hmm. Bollywood has been the other big anchor uh, ruling the roost in terms of audience viewership. Right. Uh, we are a market which instinctively craves more creative content. Mm -hmm. right? And creative content um, being made available in vernacular languages, creative content being made available in regional languages uh, is, 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 is a requirement which will always uh, be welcomed by Indian audiences uh, across demographics and across regions. And, and to that extent, you already see a lot of uh, production companies, mm -hmm. ALT Balaji, for example, right. uh, making uh, a lot of investments. Right. Uh, Sony Live, right. uh, making a lot of investments in this area. Uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Hotstar, Prime, Hotstar, Hotstar Boot. Yeah. Uh, they, all, they, they, make, they all make, and these are some, some of the bigger names. There right. are obviously much, much larger set of smaller names yeah. that one doesn't talk about were making concerted efforts mm -hmm. in creating content which is unique to India, which is regional, which is, um, which is vernacular, mm -hmm. uh, and which is being craved by mm -hmm. uh, audiences. The other factor that one needs to account for is that in our country, where we are placed today, uh, the cost of internet data, or data through internet, uh, mm -hmm. is probably the most competitively priced right. in anywhere across the world the quality of data and data yeah. services is improving right. significantly right. Right. right 3g 4g people are talking of 5g exactly. and, and going forward uh, the cost of data is low um, huge amount of market competitiveness being there which basically means that today uh, an average consumer across tiers uh, including the smaller tiers mm -hmm. of, of market classes has access to to data to to the internet mm -hmm. much more than a lot of his peers would have uh, anywhere else in the world right. at a cost which mm -hmm. is far more uh, optimized or subsidized versus what it would be available in any other part of the world. Uh, the third factor is of course the penetration of uh, mobile devices mm -hmm. and, and the penetration of mobile devices being combined by some of these devices being manufactured by the hardware giants themselves. For this, uh, of for this kind of content being created and consumed is, right. is, is is on an all-time high. Right. So look at what Reliance is doing with Geo and, mm -hmm. and its phones. Mm -hmm. uh, look at how content is now being made available, optimized not just to smartphones but also to feature phones. Exactly. So today, feature phones, as we all know, are, are even cheaper than the smartphones, right. and right. yet right. you have the opportunity of consuming content through them, uh, mm -hmm. through optimized um, uh, coding and, and packages. So I think if you so therefore if you look at the penetration of the mobile phone, if you look at the penetration of internet, mm -hmm. if you look at the penetration at the cost at which internet and data connectivity is being made available, the quality of data connectivity that's being made available, the amount of content that people are already consuming on their tablets vis-a-vis -vis the television, mm -hmm. I think these are all very very strong markers for the OTT industry to to be on a huge upswing. Right. And I would, I would not uh, be surprised at all that in another five, seven years from now, in fact, it's already started, but right. another five, seven years from now, a lot of brand marketing uh, setups mm -hmm. will start looking at reallocating media monies mm -hmm. from their conventional media advertising, uh, you know, televisions and, and radios mm -hmm. and, and, and billboards and cinema to OTT platforms. Right. Because the OTT consumption today is 
what probably already reaching about 180 million odd uh, consumers or right. viewers, right. right? And with all these enabling factors that we have in place, I think it's it's a huge opportunity for brand marketers to mm. to to kind of cognize for. Right. Um, the last point that I would add here is is something which this platform also intrinsically allows you to do, right. is to tell richer long format stories. Right. So from a brand marketing point of view, um, if I can be smart, mm -hmm. and if I can uh, if if I can create stories uh, which weave mm -hmm. brand purpose right. with the kind of uh, relevant context in which those content pieces can be developed, right. I think there's an opportunity to go beyond. Right. The regular 30 seconder, 60 seconder kind exactly. of TVC exactly. environment that all of us have kind of grown up with. Right. So I think the opportunity is huge. Right. Uh, I think the opportunity is there to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an instinctive feel that consumers and audiences are hungry for this kind of content. Mm -hmm. uh, and I clearly therefore see uh, brand marketing and brand marketers embracing this opportunity um, going forward more than ever in the past. Right. Moving on to Fab India, right? Uh, so I remember, you know, speaking to uh, you know industry friends about uh, the campaign that you had done, uh, you know, uh, with plays, uh, multi-city plays, right? Uh, so, so you had you had basically sponsored multi-city plays, and I mean, and people are really appreciable because you know, uh, this is I mean, Fab India as a product, you know, has a direct connect with the kind of people that you are, you know, uh, the audience that you know plays has. So. What what's next from Five India? What, what kind of innovation are we you know waiting from you? So I think what you're referring to is is the theatre tour that we've done, right. uh, which was perhaps India's largest theatre tour. Right. Uh, we've done with this property called uh, Salam Noni Appa. Salam Noni Appa, yeah. And Salam Noni Appa worked very well for us as a brand. Worked very very well for us, even for our for our audiences, mm -hmm. and and they thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think one of the beautiful things about how we participated in that property mm -hmm. was not just as a logo sponsor right. who was presenting a property exactly, uh, to exactly. whatever. I think the way uh, we worked through that one and the reason why it actually mm -hmm. worked for us was because it gave us a platform to integrate our products mm -hmm. with the core of the property right. uh, and therefore to offer the audience mm -hmm. a far more holistic, comprehensive, immersive brand marketing experience or a brand experience uh, than you know, just than just a lot of um, examples that one sees normally, mm -hmm. which is where you know you're, you're nothing but a logo, and if you're a presenting sponsor, you have a bigger size logo. Right. Uh, <laughs> if you're the only sponsor, then you have the biggest logo biggest of them logo. all. But you're you're nothing more than a logo. So I think in this particular case, uh, the storyline, the cast worked very well with our audiences, and the way we were able to integrate our products Product. with the overall property, I think worked very well. Um, and we're very proud of that mm -hmm. association. And I think that is that is something which largely represents what we are attempting to do mm -hmm. um, as, as a brand, which is to build in and weave experiences for our consumers right. across every touch point. Mm -hmm. yeah, those touch points be at our store uh, and, and from an experience point of view, we've innovated with something which is truly exciting uh, called the Fab India Experience Center which talks only about right. uh, you know, what kind of experiences can be made alive at mm -hmm. the retail format level, uh, or experiences through uh, events and sponsorships, where Salan Muniapa is, is a very good example, um, or experiences through individual consumer interactions, um, where you know, our teams uh, are being better trained and, and better focused on communicating products, their stories, where they come from, uh, how these products can become even more relevant mm -hmm. uh, as part of consumers' daily lives uh, and taking those stories forward. Great, Karan. Thank you so much. It has been an insightful you know, uh, talk and it was uh, great having you on the show. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. It was lovely meeting you again. Thanks. 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 So viewers, uh, with this, we come to an end of today's uh, episode. Uh, till the next time, since we are back with you know, uh, yet another episode and yet another expert helping us understand the trends in this marketing industry. Uh, stay tuned to ET Bandicoot.